If you want to play better guitar, one of the best things that you can do is to develop your own ideas. I'm going to show you a very simple, straightforward way of doing that with an example coming right up. If you want to improve and especially get better at improvising, you've got to learn how to develop your own ideas. Now don't get me wrong, it's totally fine to learn scales, arpeggios, and other people's licks and stuff like that, but at some point you have to learn how to say something of your own. I think about it this way. I go for walks pretty much every day in my neighborhood. Now I might meet somebody I don't know. Maybe somebody who's walking a dog, because I really like dogs. So I might smile and strike up a conversation. Do I need to know exactly what I'm going to say? I mean, other than, oh, what a good boy. <laughs> no, we don't need to copy or memorize a conversation before we have it. We just have it. I mean, at some point, we probably memorized phrases and words from our parents and friends and things like that. But when we're in a conversation, we don't have to plan it all out beforehand, and it usually just works out fine. So that's talking with people. But what about guitar? Well, one thing we're taught is to learn our scales, learn them up and down the neck. The problem with that is that if that's all you do, it's kind of like learning grammar without ever talking to people. It just doesn't work. Another thing that we can do is we can learn a lick from a famous player. Now that's a lot better because like learning a sentence, we can tailor that lick to a different conversation, right? If we're having a conversation with a different person, they may ask a different question and it might require us to be a little bit flexible. That's how we want to be with our licks. We want to be able to use them freely. And to do that, we have to develop our own ideas. Let me show you what I mean through an example from a famous YouTuber and Instagram guy, Rick Beato. Here's a recent lick from Rick's Instagram. Now, it's kind of a difficult lick, but as you'll see, basically what we're going to do is we're going to learn the lick and then you'll use your own knowledge and your own skills to extend it or to just change it a little bit so that you own it. All right, so a really cool lick, and it's a tough one. At least it is for me, because I'm not used to playing those wide intervals. All right, well, let's look at it without all the doodads, without all the hammering on, which makes it interesting, but also kind of clouds what's going on. On the B minor, we started out with this. Then an A. B minor. A. B minor. A. B minor, A. All right, so that's the lick, and Rick explains it using intervals, but here's the thing. I need to understand it in a way that makes sense to me so that I can extend it and I can put it into a different context and actually use it. Here's how I understand it. As you might guess, it's through triads. So what I noticed when I was looking at this is that all these intervals are, every one of them are the top and bottom strings from a B minor or an A major triad, one of the inversions. So let's take a look at it right here. That's the top and bottom from a B minor triad. This one. That's the top and bottom from an A major triad. B minor. A major. B minor, A major, B minor, A major. So, for example, that suggests I could make a lick out of using that same idea, top and bottom strings from a triad on a different set of strings. Like, I could use, for example, the D, G, and B strings to make this sort of a lick. B minor, A major, B minor, A major, B minor, A major, B minor. Right? And that might sound kind of cool. Another thing we can do is change the rhythm. So for example, instead of playing what Rick did, we could do something else, maybe arpeggiate. You know, something like that. Or, I could even add notes at the end, like a melodic line. You 
you know, something like that. Finally, the kicker is to put it into a song's context. So I put together a backing track, complete with a beat, <laughs> and I'll also add in something I love to do, which is at the very end of it, instead of just sticking to the pattern, play something that a rock guitarist would play, maybe something from a minor pentatonic. <laughs> Hey, if you are one of those people who wants to play like themselves, and it's amazing to me how so few people want to do that. Anyway, if you're still here, you're one of those people. And I know you're going to want to click on this because in there I have all sorts of insights that are going to help you play like yourself. So click on this and we'll see you in the next video.